You're listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. To the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's DC in the building for the Pelicans Post Game Report. This is show 139, and we're going to be covering a lot of topics. We're going to go over the Bulls recap. Yeah, that's right. Double overtime thriller that we won, the thriller in Manila uh, in Chicago. So we took that, and we're going to go over the Grizzlies, and we also going to preview the Hornets. We're going to have some interviews for y'all from AD, Marcus Cousins, and Al Gentry. Big Q was nice enough to let me host the show today, so get used to it. This is DC, Sports Coma. Big Q, the co-host. What's happening, Big Q? How you doing, man? Doing fine, my man. Uh, big ups to the family out there today. Yeah, that's right. Much love. So first off, let's go ahead and get into it with this Bulls recap. Talk about this game. Pretty impressive game. It was very entertaining. I think I almost got an ulcer in my stomach. I was so nervous. I didn't know if we was going to win. But we pulled it off. Thrilling fashion. And the double time, uh, double overtime double victory. OT. That's yeah. big. That's big. Very, very big. We won uh, 132 to 128. That's right. Overcoming a serious deficit, uh, down 18 points in the fourth quarter. Yeah, major. The biggest lead in this game was 18 points by them. Our biggest lead was 13. The longest run for the Pelicans was a 13-point run. There was 11 lead changes, 12 ties. The wow. highest scores for for the Pelicans were the ball. Uh, for the Pelicans was Demarcus Cousins. With a historic game of 44 points, y'all. Yeah. He also uh, had 24 rebounds and 10 assists. The next highest score on their team were two people, in fact. They're tied. You had uh, Markerson, who also had 22 and 17 rebounds. You had Grant with 13 assists and also 22 points. It was 54 rebounds for the Bulls, 55 for the Pelicans, 15 offensive rebounds we pulled down. That was a major key to victory, uh, especially one of those those rebounds late in the game. They also had six offensive rebounds, 48 defensive rebounds for them, 40 for us, 31 assists for them, 32 for us. We pulled down 14 steals. Probably had about six of them on our way to that uh, late run and comeback. They had eight steals. We had three blocks. They had five. The Pelicans only recorded 13 turnovers in a double overtime win. And we forced 24 from the Chicago Bulls while only committing 28 fouls, and they committed 32. The first quarter, we won it, as usual, by 25 points. They had 21. The second quarter was 29 points by us, so we were still up. And they scored 27. We went into it with a halftime lead as usual. And we came out and scored 27 in the third quarter, which is not bad. But we gave up 33. And we tied in the fourth quarter with 33 points apiece to go on to overtime. Well, we both scored eight points in the first overtime. And uh, the second overtime, they only put up six. And we put up 10 points to go ahead and give us that four-point victory. So that's the stats. That's the data. Let's break down the numbers as far as our players. Etwan Moore had 15 points. Anthony Davis had 34. DeMarcus Cousins had 44. Drew Holiday dropped 12. Rondo added in another five. You had DeMarcus Miller with 10. DeMarcus Darius Miller with 10. Ian Clark only scored two points in that whole goal miss in that overtime. Wish he could have dropped that one, bruh. Jamil Nelson had nine points, and Dante Cunningham, I don't know how he did it, but he only managed to score one point. <laughs> so let's get into how the Pelicans won this game. Um, 
I think it was sheer will, tenacity, and determination that got them this victory. As you can uh, hear later on when we give this interview from DeMarcus Cousins, he said we just wanted it more. And I feel like that's basically what it was. But I was a little disappointed with the fact that we could not take them out at the end of the first, I guess I wouldn't say overtime, but the end of the game in regulation. We could have easily won that game. We gave up an easy trash shot, and we probably shouldn't even been scrappling at the end once we went on that long run to take it back. But I was real impressed with the guys' tenacity to fight back, and I think this could be one of those memorable games during the season where they have a turning point, and maybe uh, we go on to finally get that seven, eight stretch, uh, I guess, win streak that we would like. Of course, we would have to take out a Rockets team that's coming up after we play Charlotte. So uh, give us a feel of the sentiments on the game, Big Q. What you think about it? First of all, a big shout out to DeMarcus Cousins, who did something fantastic, man. He was the first player, uh, like you mentioned earlier, uh, to score that that half <laughs> that many that that kind of byline, man. That kind of scoring line. 44, 24, and ten. That is first the, player since Will Chamberlain in nineteen sixty eight. That, that is that is that is awesome. Also, Maybe. he also was up there with uh, three other guys, two other guys for his uh, when he scored the thirty points as well. He was thirty. Uh, points uh more than 10 rebounds uh, i mean excuse me it's 30 points uh 24 rebounds 20 something rebounds for so a 30 20 and 10 game he was also got up there with uh david uh lee from the the knicks and uh, and kareem abdul jabbar so he he really did some things in this game i think uh, uh you know besides anthony davis had a stellar game as well he was quite fantastic too uh, by DeMarcus Cousins' historic uh, game. AD did give 34 points, nine rebounds in the game. In 43 minutes, he fouled out in the first of the two overtime periods. I think what it boils down to in this particular game uh, to be kind of expedite, expedite, expedite my um, commentary is the fact that the Pelicans, uh, not to take nothing away, this is a very hard-fought game. They came from 19 points down in this game to take this game back from Chicago. At one point, I was like, they're not going to win this game. 18 points, bro. Right, right. 18 points. I've heard 19, but 18 points. He came from 18. This team just fought back in the fourth right. quarter uh, to take the game to force an overtime period. At different points and intervals, they shot 22 of 26 from the free throw line, had about 85% there. So uh, I think probably the one of the things you have to look at is the fact that what helped the team is uh, the fact that the Bulls did turn the ball over a bunch of times, too. They had 24 turnovers that translated to 22 points. So the Pelicans took advantage of that. Most definitely, they certainly did. Um, well, we're going to listen to a little bit of Al Gentry, man, to uh, hear him clarify some things on, uh, I guess, hopefully these lineups, because I feel like our guys were gassed, man. I wish we would have saw more uh, substitutions and a little bit uh, better switching to the lineup. Like, I don't understand why Rondo only played 14 minutes in a double overtime game, but we won it. So let's hear uh, Alvin Gentry and I guess some of the keys to victory. Um, I mean, it was obviously it was a great win and a great comeback. Sometime, uh, you know, I wish we would start the third quarter like we played the last eight minutes. We just got to find a way to get past that. But uh, other than that, I thought we were great. You know, I mean, you know, obviously DeMarcus had a stat line for the ages, you know. Last person to do that was Will Chamberlain in 19, you know, 50 years ago. So. Uh, that, that that should tell you about that. But I thought everybody defensively just picked it up. You know, we did a great job, especially those last eight minutes. And then I thought we did a good job in the overtimes. Coach, certainly there's physical challenges in a win like this. What about mentally for your guys, starting with the 18-point deficit in the fourth quarter? Well, we uh, our transition defense uh, just collapsed, really. And uh, we let them run out. And they're a great team, as we said, when they run out and they're shooting threes. Uh, on the in transition, you know, they're very good at it. They got five, six guys that can shoot, you know, close to 40%. So uh, we just, we, we didn't get back. We tried to attack the offensive boards a few times and, and that uh, made our transition defense uh, struggle some. So, but uh, we began to tell them that, you know, only our four and five was going to the offensive boards. Everyone else had to get back. So we took that out of the game. And then I thought uh, it started with Drew. I thought Drew really turned up our defense and uh, and then everyone else followed suit. Are you relieved? Are you proud? Are you enthused? I mean, what do you kind of what emotion do you take from a game like 
Well, I can tell you this, this is my 30th year in the NBA and I've never had a bad win, ever. So I'm, I'm proud of the way we played. I'm proud of the fact that we could win the game. And you know, it's on to Charlotte. You know, we don't have to worry about this one anymore. Uh, what we have to do is then be prepared for the next game. That's it. What do you say about this team to do this though without A D at the end? Well, I just thought, <clears throat> you know, everybody just dug in uh, defensively and not, you know, the thing that we tried to stress on the bench is that, you know, the only way that we're going to be able to come back is to get stops. We can't trade baskets because they're already 10 up. So uh, I thought we came out and then the next four possessions, we all got stops on. So. And there's Al Gentry telling us a bunch of stuff we already knew. Uh, not really giving us anything <laughs> to build off, so we ain't going to comment too much on that. But let's move on and catch the next guy uh, out the locker room. Let's catch DeMarcus Cousins, the man of the hour, with a historic game. And and he probably going to need a, a big old ice tub to, <laughs> to cool him off after all that work he did. Here's DeMarcus Cousins. So what, so what are you most impressed with on the points, the rebounds, the sense of the minutes? The minutes. Oh, the minutes. And, um... You know, my strength coach had the nerve to ask me, do I want to lift after this game? <laughs> I almost lost it. If I had some energy, we would have fought. <laughs> but, no, nah, um, it was definitely a high amount of minutes. So, um, you know, I'm going to get in this cold tub, try to get my body charged up to get ready for this, this quick road trip. To get a bear hug from AD, leaving the floor, clearly he was locked into that second overtime despite being – Fouled out. What does that say about the closeness of this group? Uh, it's about the win, man. Um, I said earlier, we're genuinely happy for one of, one another's success, and uh, that's what it's about. I think that's that type of that type of energy is going to carry us through the remainder of this season. So, uh, you know, any given night it could be somebody's night, and it so happened to be mine tonight. And uh, you know, the next game it may be somebody else's, and we're going to rally around that guy the same way. So, um, I think that's what it's about. And this one gave y'all uh, six out of the last innings. It feel like y'all are starting to build something now. Um, we're building in the right direction. Uh, still making a lot of mistakes. Um, Got to do a better job of, you know, not fouling three point shooters at the end. <laughs> uh, still, still mistakes, but uh, you can learn from wins and losses. And uh, we'll take this win and we'll try to learn from it. What do you enjoy about the assists, the assist numbers, the 10 assists? It seemed like you channeled your inner two on a couple of those deep balls. Ah, uh, um, just trying to make a play. You know, they they put they expect me to make plays for this team on a nightly, and uh, you know, just trying to go out and do my job. When they missed the final shot, you just kind of done over, put you on your knees. What are you thinking? Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like this game was so long <laughs> for no reason, <laughs> man. I'm just glad it's over. Seriously, I'm glad this game is over. I think they feel the same way, too. Mark, <laughs> when you look at the stat sheet, what were you most impressed with on the points, the points, the rebounds, the sense of the minutes? <laughs> the minutes? <laughs> oh, the minutes. And, um, you know, my strength coach had the nerve to ask me, do I want to lift after this game? <laughs> <laughs> I almost lost it. If I had some energy, we would have fought. <laughs> but no, nah, um, it was definitely a high amount of minutes. So, um, you know, I'm going to get in this cold tub, try to get my body charged up to get ready for this, this quick road trip. To get a bear hug from AD, leaving the floor, clearly he was locked into that second overtime despite being fouled out. What does that say about the closest that goes to Marcus group? Cousins, man. The historic, historic guy uh, did a Will Chamberlain impersonation. A very big game from him, man. Um, I don't know what the, what you call it, man. What to say about it? I mean, it's just impressive, man. I mean, that cement, uh, cements the fact that he belongs in the All Star game. And shout out to both of them brothers, man. Uh, AD and Demarcus Cousins for being the first Pelicans teammates same year to make an All Star game. I thought Chris Paul and David West did it, but Apparently, I'm wrong when I looked up the stats. So, shout out to both of them brothers for making that All-Star game. But it's funny that they changed the format now and they can't even play together. <laughs> Their first time doing it, they might more than likely probably going to wind up on different teams because I know if if somebody picks the Marcus or picks AD, if you're smart, you better get the other one. You don't want to deal with that double trouble. Um, shout out to DeMarcus Cousins, man, for a huge, huge game. Uh, best big man in the game, man. 
dominant performance. And if we didn't have him, there ain't no way in hell we would have won that game against the Bulls, man. DeMarcus Cousins put the team on his back, literally dragged them to victory. So much love, much respect, much rest to you because you're going to need it, my brother. Y'all going to have to come out against Charlotte and you're going to face uh, Superman himself. It's going to be a tough game as well. So Big Q, what you, what you think about that performance from DeMarcus Cousins? Out, out, out of worldly, bro. Out of worldly. I mean, he was excellent, man. He, it was one for the ages. If you tape the game, good for you because you won't see a, a performance like this in a long time. It took you 50 years to get the second one after Luel, I mean, after Walt, uh, Will Chamberlain did it some 50 something odd years ago. So big ups to him. Well, y'all hear the music. Y'all know what time it is. We got to go pay some bills. This is Pelicans Post Game Report with DC. See y'all on the other side of the <laughs> Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention, everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G Bounce. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is The Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Uh, uh, What's up, sports world? This Big Q from The Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics, and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes so what are you waiting for head on over to the posh lifestyle.com that's the posh lifestyle life spell with a y l y f e style.com put in the sports coma for the 10 percent discount on your purchase it's a win-win so get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. Right, right. You know what it is. That's right. The Pelicans Post Game Report. And we're doing a recap of the Bulls. The Grizzlies in a preview of the Charlotte Hornets. We got our man AD coming up with this interview. We're going to see what his sentiment was, sentiments was on the game when we get the mic to him. They kicked him out, man, in the, in the overtime. They gave him a little pity pat foul. Talking about he hit the dude on the face. I ain't seen nothing. Looked like a clean defensive play to me. But AD nevertheless still dropped 34 points. He had nine rebounds and he balled out, man. Another. Big reason that we won this game. So let's hear what the big man himself has to say about it. Yeah, two of the other guys who have put up numbers like that, and uh, to do it, you know, to be in company with that, um, with them legends, is uh, amazing for him. Um, and I'm happy that he, he did it with a happy he did it with a off a win too. So um, he played he played big tonight. And even it's pretty uh, enthusiastic there in double overtime after you fouled out. I mean, how, how locked in were you just watching? Them? I had to stay locked in. Um, you know, I couldn't help my team on the floor. So, yeah, you know, when I'm not playing, I try to stay engaged, you know, talking, um, whatever, talking to the other team, you know, all the, whatever you got to do to get a win. So, um, I felt like that was the only way I was able to get involved with the game. How do you describe those first three quarters and, and then – uh, we didn't flip the switch. We don't have. We're not good enough for a switch. But um, we just decided to play defense. Um, it was tied up going into fourth quarter. 
they went on a crazy run. Um, we had like eight minutes left. We just said that we're going to play defense. We play defense one possession at a time, and we're able to come back and um, you know, have a chance to win the game in regulation. You know, stuff happens, going to overtime, same thing, and then go out there and win it in double overtime. So, um, just happy that we got this. Can you describe what it kind of felt like to be part of that 21-2 run over the last five minutes? You know, just, late. I mean, just in terms of energy or growing confidence? Or yeah, a lot of energy. A lot of energy from you know, the crowd, the bench. Um, you know, every time we score, we just look. And I was just thinking, man, cut to 10 with like four minutes. Um, Got to stop, score it again. Got to stop, score it again. Um, as you know, we were... I think I remember we had the, I'm at the free throw line, you know, trying to win the game. Um, made two, we go up two. Um, we had a chance of winning over in regulation, but um, it was a crazy atmosphere. Um, you know, the, to have the poise and composure to come back like that, <coughs> down 18. Uh, it's a team who, who was rolling, you know, get some stops. It was a big for our confidence. How crazy was the game overall just with holidays missing? Missing that last free throw after easily making the first two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> me and Demar, <laughs> it's great when he got fouled and he made the first one. Then I look, so uh, he maybe gonna miss this one. He switched that one. And I look at Demar and we both just shook our head, but like these like sad faces, like man, we had this one. And then he missed. And we were like, all right, let's go get it. <laughs> he he messed up. You know, he messed up by. Missing that free throw, so uh, that's how we're thinking. We're just trying to go overtime and try to get a win. Say something to this team going forward that you can point to this and say, hey, you guys are never really out of the game. Oh, uh, for sure, and we always feel that way. Um, we just want to go out and compete. Um, just play to the end. You never know what can happen. You know, crazy things happen in the NBA. Just like and that was so AD, man, getting you the business, letting you know what it is. And it was a very interesting point I want to touch on before we go ahead and move on. AD said, we are not a big enough, a good enough team to have a switch. Um, man, Big Q actually talked about that when we heard this interview, man. That's that's very impressive. That's almost like a 32, 34-year-old comment, you know, um, very wise beyond his years, man. Anything you want to touch upon before we move on to this Grizzlies recap? Yeah, I agree with you, DC. That That's a very uh, interesting comment that he had. We're not good enough to have a switch yet. And you have all, uh, a guy just set a historical record, 40, 20, and 10, and they're not good enough to have to switch. He knows that. But this is a major win for them because not only did they beat – let me tell you something. This Bull Club – I'm going to give some respect to this Bull Club. Pretty crappy. Good luck I like team, this man. little Bull yeah. Club. Now, I liked them last year when Rajon Rondo played with them, when he almost defeated – they almost defeated uh, the, uh, the uh, Cleveland well, – who did they play? Boston in the first right. round and they were up two games and nothing. And this was the similar team. They didn't have Merkin in then, but you got, I got to give credit to the bullet, the, the bulls administrators, man. They really get, they have some really nice young pieces on this line. And remember they, they played without Chris Dunn in this game. Who's, who's a, a very good point yeah, guard, good, point guard, good but, young uh, part guard. Grant, Grant, uh, he stepped in. Grant, excellent a, job. They, Grant's not an old guy. Grant was a former first round draft pick. The Knicks had that they got rid of before they got this other kid there. But, Zach Levine, uh, Mar- uh, Laurie like Merkadin, Valentine, uh, you know, Bobby Portis, uh, Maratovic. They, this, Merkovic, Merkovic, whatever his name is. They have some Merkovich. really good, talented pieces here, and they had played this team trade close to last. Between us and Merkovic. I would love to see him down here because he gives them something that they don't have off the bench, a scorer. And somebody who could relieve a big. Nah, we're going to see Darryl. What about Darius Miller? Darius Miller's doing good. I'm not going to take nothing away from Darius. But we do need a a uh, power forward that scores to take the pressure off those guys. There you go, DC. Well, it would have been nice to have that other Wildcat that we cut uh, last year, Taylor. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, not Taylor. You're yes. thinking about Terrence Jones. Terrence Jones, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah you always call him Trailer. <laughs> well, track the Trailer. That's track the one. Trailer Taylor for uh, Houston Rockets. We're, we're moving on, man. Let's get into this Grizzlies. Breakdown. We survived the mall in, of the Grizzlies, y'all. They put up 37 points on us in the third quarter. And <laughs> we managed to to survive that and go on and get a victory. The Pelicans won this game 111 to 104. There were only two times that this game was tied. Only twice. 
The longest run that we had was a 14 point run. The biggest lead we had was a 20 point, uh, 21 point lead. The Grizzlies never had a lead in this game, so it was a very commanding victory. The leading score for the Grizzlies was 31 points from Selden, a player that we once had. Yeah. Should have held on to him, huh? Well, Wayne Selden, <laughs> I don't think we ever had Wayne Selden. We did have Wayne Selden, probably in one of the 10-day contracts. You know, we had a revolving. Oh, my goodness, like we had Wayne Selden. We had man. Wayne Selden. Wow. Uh, Drew Holiday I dropped. I recognize that. Well, you we know we're not always good at evaluating talent. Drew Holiday dropped 27 points. Uh AD had 12 rebounds. The highest leader in assists was Drew Holiday with eight. Mark Gasol had seven, and Green had 16 rebounds for them. We actually lost the rebound battle in this game. They had four, uh, 44 rebounds to our 41. Ten offensive rebounds the Grizzlies had, and we had six. They had 34 defensive rebounds. We had 35. We managed to get 23 assists and uh, out them by one assist. They had 22. We got six steals to their two, five blocks to their one, and we only had 10 turnovers to their 14. 15 fouls to their 29. It's amazing, amazing stat, that turnover stat. I'm loving what I'm seeing from the Pelicans. We're really dipping those turnover numbers down, and it's leading to victories. The The scoring on our team went like a little bit like this. We had DeMarcus Cousins with 24 points. AD, the third man in the group, with 21. Yeah, Drew Holiday with 27, of course. Etwan Moore dropped nine. Rondo put in seven. Darius Miller got 12 points as usual, man. This guy is awesome off the bench. So, the hell with what Big Q said about that score. We got one on the bench. We need. We could use another one, though. Um, Ian Clark chipped in and had seven points. Dante Cunningham managed to get four points. Very, very entertaining game this was against the Grizzlies. We survived their mauling, and we go on to get our second win against the Bulls. This was the first one starting this, this uh, little mini win streak we on, man. Very impressive. Um, they they were very dominant, but as usual, we had third quarter problems, man. And uh, I want to touch on something i seen in this game as well as the Bulls game, and I think a lot of this has to do with our rotations, uh, like we were just talking about with Mikovic having another big that can actually come in and not just defend and rebound, but actually score. We have a team that's set up for bigs to be able to score. So obviously you're going to need at least one relief guy off the bench. So uh, maybe from time to time you can rest DeMarcus Cousins and AD at the same time. And I noticed another thing. Um it seems that DeMarcus Cousins and A.D. get a little confused when they're out there and uh, leading the team by themselves. I see DeMarcus Cousins hanging around the three-point line, and Dante Cunningham is a power forward. Why are you at the three-point line? <laughs> that don't make no sense. Uh, A.D. does the same thing from time to time, and I think they're used to playing that high-low game with both of them being out there, and I'm going to put that on Alva Gentry for not getting on them and reminding them, hey, you're the only big out there. You need to be in the paint, man. What you doing? So uh, we definitely need to get that together. And uh, the same thing that went into the reason why this, this Chicago game previously went on to a double overtime game, we have to figure out something with these third quarters. Our third quarter against uh, Chicago wasn't as bad as the Memphis third quarter, so we definitely improved. But we definitely dropped the ball in the beginning of the fourth in the, in the Bulls game, which we, we didn't do in the uh, the Grizzlies game. So we got to figure out a rotation or something here. What I'm seeing, the guys look lethargic. They look tired. They look drained. Uh, we usually run an eight to nine man rotation sometimes. I mean, maybe some games after you're coming off back to back, maybe we need to get a 12 man rotation or a 10 or 11 guy rotation because this is the same thing over and over again. I've been watching this team all season and you see that the first and the second quarter, we're very dynamic, but we come out the second half, man, is, we're stagnant. Every game, we, we never come out in the second half and just blow the doors off. Or if we do, it's only for a half of the third, and we just drop the ball towards the end. And you notice that most teams, um, especially the winning teams, around about the seven to six-minute mark during the third quarter, you see their starters, uh, such as a Steph Curry or a James Harden 
uh, even the LeBron. You see them laying on the sideline with their towels relaxing, getting ready for the fourth quarter. So I think this is a very major adjustment we need to to make to avoid these thrilling fourth quarter victories in uh, these games where we know that we should be leading. Out of the last four games, we've had three games that went to overtime. I mean, that's, that's – it's good that we we're winning and we're uh finally four games above 500 but we can't keep this pace up man it's like we we got to play pay, playoff basketball just to win a regular game sometimes against subpar competition so uh what's your your statements on that and commentary on watching this Grizzlies uh almost mauling <laughs> uh the Pelicans uh, well you know they were coming off that disastrous Atlanta loss. So they had to redeem themselves in this game and they were able to come out and do some things well. So, I mean, when you account for everything that happened in this game, I think probably the best thing was the the Pelicans low turnover rate on the 11 turnovers. So uh, outside of that, I I think they did pretty decently in, in, in uh, when it's all said and done. So, I mean, not a bad job after that Atlanta uh, loss, of course. So that's what we think. Now let's hear with the uh, big think tank, <laughs> Alvin Gentry, the bug-eyed fish, <laughs> has to say himself. Well, you know, I, I, I think it's great that we did that. I mean, obviously, uh, I wish we didn't do that, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but they did come out and make some threes to start the third quarter. And, uh, you know, they've got a lot of young guys. And I, I, I told the guys that they, would, they wouldn't quit, although they played last night. I knew that they would compete and uh, still try to get back in the game. And they did a good job of, uh, you know, they, they, they made some, some, some tough threes uh, to cut the game and even get it to one point. But I do like the fact that we uh, maintained our poise and was able to finish the game. Coach, can you talk about, uh, we always talk about the two big guys. Is this another, another example of how important Drew is to this team? Yeah, no, Drew, Drew played great. And... Uh, Thought he did a did a really good job, and then down the stretch, I thought he was really really good. They they do this team does a uh, a really good job of trying to take the bigs away. And it's not just you know the individual defense. They really kind of go all out and sacrifice a lot to make sure that those guys are are not getting up shots. I mean, AD got 13 shots, and Demarcus got 13 shots. They just don't allow you to play freely where you're moving the basketball and just. Uh, uh, getting easy shots, so you have to try to, you know, take advantage of what they're giving you. And then, you know, obviously Wayne Selden played his best game as a pro. He shot the heck out of the basketball, and he was he was one of the main reasons that they were able to stay in the game. Is your but, offense better when it's balanced like this, or is this just a matter of, of shifting as the game goes on? Well, I think uh, obviously more and more uh, teams are trying to take those two bigs out of the game and see what we can do with the other players. And, and that's fine because, like I said, all those guys want to do is win. And if they have to take 13 shots to do it, they're both fine. From some of this. And that was uh, Alvin Gentry himself uh, giving us a little bit of <laughs> info, pretty much common sense stuff we already know. Well, I'm going to have to stop playing them like that, but it is what it is. But uh, so I really won't talk too much on this Grizzlies win it was it was a dominant win uh, it was a lot closer than it should have been but a win nonetheless so we're gonna move on and move forward to the game that we have coming up tomorrow which will be against the Charlotte Hornets this is a team that's that's not doing as well as they would like right now um our all-time record against them is 18 and 8 uh, I guess we played pretty good against them because we were kind of ticked that they took our name. <laughs> Remember, we didn't have a name for a while. And the same thing happened a while ago with the Jazz, but we can't seem to beat them all the time. Um, we got a lot of Wildcats on this team, man. You got Malik Monk and uh, Michael Childress Giltress, the guy that uh, AD and Darius Miller actually played with. It have been amazing to see him on this team. And, um Charlotte is actually a team in disarray. There's trade rumors about surrounding uh, Kimball Walker. Uh, Dwight Howard is playing pretty decent. They have a, a nice score off the bench in Jeremy Lamb, who averages about 18 points a game. Well, this is definitely a team that I see uh, pretty weak right now that we can take and get a victory against. Um, if we can slow down Kimball Walker and contain uh, 
Jeremy Miller and, and stop Malik Monk from hitting some of those three pointers. Um, I think Dwight Howard, the situation with our bigs and AD probably on him, or even the Demarcus Cousins, it'll take care of itself. So uh, I have the Pelicans actually. This is a uh, record breaking, you guys. I'm gonna go out on a limb now. I'm gonna say the Pelicans win this game. What? Cause you know me, I was win a game, lose a game, win a game, lose a game, win a game, lose a game, win a game. <laughs> That's how I was picking them. But I think they're actually gonna go out and win this game, y'all. Um, I'm very excited to see it. And we can go on and get on a three game winning streak. And maybe Drew Holiday can have a big game and Kendall Walker can have a bad game and we can convince them to possibly trade Kimball Walker here. <laughs> what you think about that, Big Q? Well, uh, the the Pelicans overall matchup against uh, the Hornets are eighteen and eight. The last five games, three and two. The last ten, seven and three. So the Pelicans pretty much have had the Hornets number uh, for some times now. So when you look at the statistics, obviously they favor your decision. I would have to say uh, I would have to go against you on that. They were actually supposed to lose that game against Chicago last night. It took a historian Herculean effort from DeMarcus Cousins for them not to lose that Why game. Why do you think they were supposed to lose? Because I saw them uh, because of the, winning that game the way they fought back in the fourth What they did, but you know. It, they were dominating the whole time. They had, they get, it game. was many different things that I've seen, the foul at the end of the game. Uh, a lot of lucky stuff happened, and they favored. They fouled Drew Holiday's brother Justin on the three-point line for the last shot. He didn't make the third shot haphazardly threw it up and missed it. If he had hit that shot, they would have lost the game. It was other things as well. But it took a Herculean. No, no, no. Justin Holiday had an opportunity when, he, when uh, Darius Miller fouled him at the three-point line at the no, end of regulation. I think so Justin Holiday was going to hit that shot. He hit two of them. I thought, I thought he rushed the last shot. And there was other scenarios that occurred where they should have lost that well, game. Why he, hit that, he couldn't hit that free throw. He couldn't hit that last free throw. I don't think there's no way in hell he hit that. Be that as it may, I still say it took a Herculean effort from DeMarcus Cousins for it to make it happen. Yo, Pierre, you know, you that's just my take on it. Yeah, well, I guess you're right on that standpoint. So I'm going to pick them to lose this game against the Hornets. What? Man, you still following my phone? After I, done did I just you? still, I think they had a good win. I just don't think they're going to win this game. Okay, um, I guess your sentiments would be tied up in them being tired. Well, I say they're going to win. God damn it. So they go going to win. That's what it is. All right. You know what I'm saying? Got gotcha. you. We got a good record against them. You know, I think this is going to be an excellent game. Bro. We wrapping up, y'all. Y'all hit the music. It's time for us to go ahead and get on up out here. I like being a host, but uh, so we'll see y'all next time. Forget ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. What's up, world? This is DC from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Have you ever been sitting in front of your computer screen, or in traffic, tired, lacking energy, feeling drained? Did you know there are electromagnetic fields or EMF waves all around you that cause this disease? Get it? This ease? Luckily here at Posh Lifestyle, you can get your EMF protection. They have pendants, the shell dye bricks, cubes, and pyramids. Check out the PoshLifestyle.com. That's life spelled with a Y. P-O-S-H-L-Y-F-E-S-T-Y-L-E.com for all your health needs. So get your mind and body right with a posh lifestyle. Clear, clean, great tasting filtered water. We're all thirsty for it. But in the U.S. alone, an estimated 2.5 million plastic bottles are added to the environment each year in search of the perfect drink of water. There has to be a better solution. And there is. Crystal Quest, a leader in the manufacturing of water filtration technology, has been providing clean, drinkable water for 20 years. With a deep commitment to providing the highest quality products and excellent customer service, Crystal Quest has been recognized by such leaders as Consumers Digest, Dr. Oz, and Colin Ingram's The Water Drinking Book. Providing cost-effective, reliable water filtration systems for residential, commercial, and industrial customers worldwide. Offering our customers the cleanest and most environmental-friendly drinking water at a rating of high purity. With Crystal Quest's water filtration technology, you can rest assured that your water will be crystal clear. 
Contact our network of authorized distributors and join our thousands of satisfied customers. Just log in to theposhlifestyle.com. Once again, that is theposhlifestyle.com. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today.